If I look like death, that's because I am death. Puffin fans, so I told you I was gonna make this video today. Essentially, I'm going to be talking about who I would cut and who I'd re-sign from the Miami Dolphins roster right now. Then I'm gonna make a video about like who I would pick up in free agency, so from other teams and stuff. But right now, that's what this video is about, who I'd cut, who I'd sign, but also I have how many things? Three? Three things to talk about before we get into that? First things first. Yesterday, in yesterday, in Saturday's video, I talked about roster needs and I talked about wide receivers and I didn't talk about Albert Wilson. I didn't talk about him because he's not going to be on the team. I didn't not talk about him because I d it, it was just foregone conclusion that Albert Wilson is, is here to stay. Uh, but I did not mention his name. He wasn't on the roster because he didn't play because he was injured, like I said. But Albert Wilson isn't going anywhere. I know a lot of you guys are like, what about Albert Wilson? And I was like, damn. Should have, I should have said Albert Wilson. So, Albert Wilson isn't going anywhere. He's probably going to be one of the leading receivers. He would have been, if he didn't get injured this year, he would have been the top leading receiver with the Dolphins and probably would have helped the Dolphins win more games than they did and would have done better than um, Jarvis Landry and would have went to the Pro Bowl. But he got injured. It was a fluke injury, but I already talked about that. Let's get on to the next thing I want to talk about is this tweet right here. And that is that uh, it seems like the Dolphins are going to be playing the Cowboys on Thanksgiving. Now, it's not a definite, but it seems like the Packers are going to be playing the Lions and the Dolphins are going to be playing the Cowboys. And a lot of people are like, why? The Dolphins are going to be tanking. Not going to be tanking. But the Dolphins are in rebuild mode. They're not going to be great next year, which we don't know that. Um... But why are they playing the Cowboys? Why are they going to be on prime time on Thanksgiving? That's because it's the 100th season of the NFL. And one of the most iconic Thanksgivings ever was the Cowboys and the Dolphins. And this play right here. Where the field goal in a snowy Texas doesn't make it. And then the, his dumbass touches it. And the Dolphins get the ball back and win the game. So... I feel like that is actually going to happen. Uh, it seems like, to me, more likely than not, that the Dolphins will be playing the Cowboys on Thanksgiving, which I tweeted out. So that's that. And then finally, this tweet again. John Denny resigns with the Dolphins. A lot of you guys broke that news to me um, in the comment section with my video Saturday. But John Denny resigns with the Dolphins. He's probably going to be one of the longest tender Dolphins ever if he's not already. So let's get, let's get, into, let's get into the crux of the matter. Let's get into what I would do. Now this video might go a little long. Saturday's video went about 18 minutes. I normally like to keep my videos around under 15 minutes, but it's a lot of things to talk about. So this video might get a little long. Apologize. If that, if you don't like that, let me know. If you're like, hey, your videos are too long when they get to 20 minutes and you need to cut out the fat. I, you know, let me know. Again, I always like what you guys tell me. So I'm gonna real quick show you. This is the unrestricted restrict. These are the Dolphins free agents. Um, you can see at the top of the list, there's Cameron Wake, William Hayes, um, Juwan James, Fon Anthony, Frank Gore. You know, you have like the top guys who have produced somewhat this year or well, this past year. And then it starts to really break down to guys who haven't really played, backups, stuff like that, like A.J. Derby, David Fales, all that stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about who I think the Dolphins should cut. Now, I kind of did this with Kay Flexen already in a, in a previous video. Go check that out. But I'm going to talk more about who I would cut, uh, who I would trade, and then who I'd re-sign. Now, with the re-sign, there's, I would say I'd re-sign so-and-so. But if not this, then, you know. So let's just jump into it before this video becomes four hours long and then you guys don't watch it and you unsubscribe. I cry to myself to sleep. So first cut I would do, Devontae Parker. I resend his fifth year option. I don't think he's worth $9.4 million. Uh, and it has nothing to do with his play on the field because I never get to see his play on the field because the dude has constantly been injured. That was his problem even coming out of Louisville. 
that when we drafted him in the first round, he had injury problems. The dude cannot stay healthy, the dude cannot stay on the field. Then he also has somewhat of an attitude problem because even when like Chris Chambers tried to help him, he was like, nah, I got this. And then he gets injured again and he just, no. So Devontae Parker, you're probably gonna do great somewhere else because you need this kick in your ass to tell you you need to take this seriously or go in a different direction with your health and your physical care so you can actually play football. Next, uh, this has been talked about forever, Ryan Tannehill. Now what I would do is I would try to trade him. Now a lot of you guys are like, you're not gonna get a bag of peanuts for Ryan Tannehill, he sucks. If you, I wrote down at least five teams that I think would trade for Ryan Tannehill. Now I'm not saying we're getting a first, second, third, not even a fourth, but if we can trade him and get something versus cut him and still take a $6 million cap hit, I feel like it equals out. But there's teams like the Jaguars, the Redskins, the Bucks, the Broncos, the 49ers, and the Cardinals that I honestly think would trade for Ryan Tannehill. I feel like the Jets would because Adam Gase is a glutton for punishment, but I don't know if the Dolphins want to trade within their division. But like the Jaguars, they have no quarterback. There's rumors that they're going for Nick Foles. You never know. We could probably give, um, get Tannehill to go there. If Nick Foles does go to the Jaguars, the Redskins, they have no quarterback. They might draft one, but they're still not in that position to get that quarterback. And they could use, uh, you know, they could use a starter on their team. Redskins, we can get one. Tampa Bay, you got Jameis Winston. What if Jameis Winston falls on his face? They need a, a reliable backup. They need another starter in there. Boom. Denver, same thing, Case Keenum. They don't have Paxton Lynch anymore. They don't really have a backup behind Case Keenum, and Case Keenum hasn't really done anything. Get Tannehill there. The 49ers, Jimmy Garoppolo's coming off a torn ACL. Who do they have to back him up? And then the Cardinals, again, new head coach, and you don't know what they have in Josh Rosen. So those are five teams I would try to trade. Now, say none of those teams want to trade for Ryan Tannehill. Then what I'm going to do is I cut him with a post-June 1st uh, designation. We save $18.75 million. He's worth 26 this year if we do nothing about it, and I would prefer to save that around $7 million. Uh, I'd take that $7 million cut and save about 18.75. Now, there, there's a lot of guys say that there's rumors out there that the Dolphins are gonna try to keep him and see what they have. That ain't happening. Tannehill's gone. I know a lot of you guys like Tannehill and you don't want him to be gone. He's gone. It's not because he's bad. It's not because he sucks, as a lot of people like to say. It's because it's been seven years and we know what we have. So he's gone. Then I'm cutting um, Robert Quinn. I'd cut him if he doesn't restructure his contract. And I'm not talking about taking his cash and moving it to the ass end like we did with Tannehill. I'm talking about cutting him. Look, we're gonna, we'll give you, cause he's due 12.9 million this upcoming season. Look, we'll give you about five. We'll give you five million for the next two years. We'll give you 10 million for a two year contract. If he says, nah, I, I, I want the 12.9, then we're like, all right, thank you for your one year of mediocrity. Good luck with your next team, cutting him. Um, then you have Branch, I'm cutting him, and I'm not even trying to restructure his contract. He, saving seven million, Branch is gone. Akeem Spence, I know it's only about 2.5 million we're saving. You're gone. You haven't done anything. Uh, now, I would try to trade TJ McDonald. If I can't trade TJ McDonald, I'm keeping him because it's it's a big, it's to cut him, it saves about a million to keep him, uh, and then the dead cap is like five million. I would keep TJ McDonald, and I would try to move him at linebacker. Now, I know that we wanted to do that last year, but we had Burke as a defense coordinator who didn't know his ass from a hole in the ground. Whereas Flores, I feel like, would be more sustained to that, would be use his brain meat and move TJ McDonald to linebacker to help the linebackers out because linebackers were bad. And then, um, I know a lot of you guys said this in the last video in the comment section, I would cut uh, Danny Amendola. Now, you're saving about six million, but by cutting him, you let like Isaiah Ford and some of the younger receivers try to get on the field and do their thing. Um, will it happen? I don't see it happening. Uh, just because Brian Flores is, is a Patriot guy and he probably knows what he has in him. But I would cut him just because the Dolphins are going in a younger way and they are going in a younger um, direction. 
Now two guys I would re-sign. Now there was there's some other guys that, before I get into re-sign, sorry, there were some guys that I was wish-washy about potentially trading, like Kiko Alonso. Um, Rashad Jones I'm not trading. It's just too much dead money and I'm not, we can have 86 million. I'm good with 86 million. We don't have to keep any more dead money. Uh, but like Kiko Alonso popped in my head like a potential trade. But then I was like, eh, you know, we, we, we don't save as much by trade, trading Kiko. And Kiko is still, he could still help. So that's why. But let's go to resign. Cameron Wake and William Hayes, they're free agents. I would talk to them. I'd be like, look. We're going in a younger, younger direction, but I want to keep you two because you two produce. I'm going to give you like two million each for one year. And if they're like, no, 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 we want to be on a, a winner. We can't do this. Da, 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 then I'm like, all right, thank you. We really appreciate everything you've done. You know, it sucks that you, you're going to leave, especially Wake, because you're going to be in the Ring of Honor. And you're going to be a Hall of Famer as a Dolphin. Uh, but I would try to keep them for not a lot. Because again, we're going in a different direction and all that stuff. If not, I'm sorry, you're cut. Uh, I'd re-sign Marquise Gray. Again, a lot of these re-signings I'm about to say are not a lot of money. Not a lot of money. Three, four million tops for some of these guys. Not a lot of money. Marquise Gray, I try to sign him for at least two years. Um, you know what we had in him? He was really shining and then he got injured. So he got, that sucked. I would try to re-sign David Fale. I know we got Falk and I know we got Ruddick. Um, but I would like another camp body in there. And again, I wouldn't pay him a lot. David fails, you know, he's an unrestricted free agent cause he's been with the dolphins long enough. And that's what it means by restricted and unrestricted free agent. If you're a free agent, but you were, you haven't played that long in the league. So if I think it's like four years, uh, you become restricted to the team. Now you can, they can, you can go and do whatever you need to do, but we can throw a tender on you. So like a second round tender. So if someone wants to sign you, they have to give us a second round pick. So I'm going to talk more about that in my next video when it comes to free agents and who I pick from another team, because then I'll break down the restricted, unrestricted Shazam. But David Fales is now unrestricted. I would try to resign him, not a lot, but if he, if he wants more, if he thinks he can start somewhere else where this is a good possibility for him to try to start for us, because I know the Dolphins are going in a direction of waiting for next year to get their quarterback, which I'm also gonna talk about that in another video, uh, I would try to sign him. Brandon Bolden, I would try to resign. He played really great for us, um, especially against the Patriots, who's running all of them, along with Sonoris Perry. I would like our backfield to be Balazs, Drake, Bolden, and Perry. Have four, those four in the backfield, running back is set, we don't have to worry about it. So I try to resign those two. And then these two guys, I, they're restricted free agents. So I would try to re-sign or tender Isaac Asiata because he never got a chance with this team. He never got a chance with Adam Gase because Adam Gase is such a stickler for offensive line. So I would try to tender or re-sign Isaac Asiata and see what we have in him. He's a bull in the run game, but he has trouble with the pass game, but we don't see what he can do because he's never on the field. So give him a chance and then Marquis Smith. The dude is always producing on special teams, and whenever he had the chance to be on the field, he played really great at safety. Um, especially if we're going to get rid of, and going young direction, get rid of Rashad Jones and TJ McDonald, having Marquise Smith and uh, Mika Fitzpatrick back there, you know? So those are the people I've re-signed. Everyone else on this list, I probably, I wouldn't re-sign. Um, Zach Sturrup, Jesse Davis, Jonathan Woodard. I'd probably try to bring Jonathan Woodard back. He's probably a name. Also, I would try to tender or re-sign. But like AJ Derby, Jake Brendel, Travis uh, Swanson, you know, Brock Osweiler. No, those are the guys I would try to bring back. Now, I know there's one name I didn't put on there, uh, Frank Gore. Now, Frank Gore, again, we're going in the, the same thing with Wake and um, Hayes. But Frank Gore, if he wants to play again, he's going to be in a backfield that's super crowded that I want to see the young guys play, like Balazs, Drake, Bolden, and Snorris Perry. So, he, and he's getting up there in age. If we're really going to stick with this going young rebuild mode, it doesn't make sense to um, re-sign Frank Gore. And I, I honestly, he, he says he wants to play again, but we'll see what happens. But to me... I'm not re-signing Frank Gore. And I know a lot of you guys are going to be like, no, but it just doesn't make sense with the backfield we have.
But those are the guys I'm cutting and re-signing from the Dolphins. Now, I, like I told you guys, I'm gonna be making a video where I'm talking about who I'm gonna target in free agency. Now, with this team, we're not gonna be making big, splashy moves. It's more conservative stuff. Um, but comment below, let me know who you would cut or you wouldn't cut that I said I would cut. And also let me know who you would sign or who wouldn't sign that I either said or didn't say. But let me get to your guys' comments. I got two of them from Twitter. So, you guys, I said I was going to be asking for Twitter questions and you guys showed up. So, here's the two from Twitter. This one comes from uh, Jared. And he asked me, do you think the Miami defense will improve this year and why? I do think they'll improve. I think they'll improve because the Dolphins will actually put stock in the defensive line. I also think because David fails because Brian Flores knows what he's doing when it comes to a defense. Now, a lot of you guys in my talking about Brian Flores thing said, you know, Bill Belichick ran the defense. It was Bill Belichick's scheme. It was Bill Belichick this, Bill Belichick that. Even Bill Belichick said that Brian Flores ran the scheme. Brian Flores was calling the plays, doing all that stuff. Um, you might not believe it, I kind of believe it because it was a completely different de defense from Matt Patricia to Brian Flores. Um, but I honestly think the defense will be better because it was very bad and you can only go up from where it was. And I think that they are really going to put stock in these defense and offensive lines. And I think it's going to show a big improvement. And then the second one comes from Lions Pride and he says, is there a player you think uh, didn't get a chance but will under the new coaches? Yes. Um, I think, like I said, Isaac Asiata, I'd like to see him come back and get a chance. I think a lot of the wide receivers will get a chance under this new regime. Um, it's just, and I even think like some of the free agents we might sign, you won't, you, or, or, like I said, aren't big and flashy, but they will get a chance and they will succeed under this new regime. So yeah, I do think so. Thank you for the question, guys. Again, like usual, comment below. Um, I love picking you. I love commenting and having conversations with you guys in the comment section, even on Twitter. So like usual, go follow me on Twitter. I was tweeting out a ton of things, especially when I found about John Denny and all this other stuff. And then there's stats that popped up that I retweet out. So follow me on Twitter, but comment below because I like having conversations. I also love picking your guys' comments. If it's a really good one that I could talk about for about a couple minutes, I will pick it because it can, I could talk about it and go in more in depth instead of typing. Um, but be sure to go follow the Bit Boys. We got I'm gonna doing two Resident Evil episodes this week. We're gonna put one out Wednesday. We'll put one out Saturday. So be sure to go over there, check out the Bit Boys. Give this video a thumbs up because we're almost at free agency, March 13th, like I said. So we're about a, about a month away. Then after that's the draft. I got so many videos planned for you guys. Even with the off season, with OTAs and training camp and stuff. If you've been with my channel from jump, you know what I do. This video got long, so you're probably like, "Wow, this video is really long. I don't feel like sitting here watching it." So if you're watching it now, comment below and say, "Hey, Doug, you, you smell like fish." And then I'll know you got to the end of the video because this video is long. And you know how when OTAs and training camps come, I tell you about everything that happened and those videos can run long. But give this video a thumbs up because you like this stuff and because you're excited for the future of the Dolphins. Subscribe if you're not subscribed already because like I said, I got a ton of Dolphin stuff and ton of Dolphin videos playing for you guys. But like usual, stay classy. I will see you guys probably on Wednesday, Wednesday or Thursday with my other videos. Fins up.